Hey everybody, this is Workforce Gaming. I'm Doug, along with Brad. Hey everybody! And this week, I will be doing nothing, because Brad will be reviewing Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, which I know nothing about. And I don't know anything about Donkey Kong, only that I played it on Game Boy when I was around 10. <laughs> and you're missing out, because it's awesome. I don't doubt it. It always looked cool. I, I played like a little bit of Super Nintendo one at a friend's house. I remember, you know, I remember the time it looked really cool. I liked how dark and weird the original one looked. It looks really spooky. Like, if you look at screens now, it's kind of a spooky-looking <laughs> game. And the new one looks a little <laughs> bit more friendly. <laughs> this one's much more friendly and colorful and cheerful and happy, and everything's bright colors. It did look like that. Is it something better than just, just that, though? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. So I just got this game because it's finally cheap because Nintendo doesn't like to make games cheap. Uh, it's part of their new Nintendo Selects program. So I think it was, like, late March. They marked it down to $20 after almost two years of being available yeah that's crazy what else was in that like list there's like a weird list when i looked at. i was like wow these games are not 20 dollars yet <laughs> i want to say it was like super mario galaxy 2 for the wii oh god i don't even remember they had wii games on that yeah yeah Holy crap. Was, it was like i want to say it was like two or three wii u games like two or three wii games and two or three 3ds games I like when Nintendo does something that should have been obvious a long time ago and they try to turn to an event. Like, I remember, like, they would announce, like, their release, and it's like, Yoshi Story for Super Nintendo is coming! Like, it was a big deal. Like, it's like, you guys should have done that a long time ago. Yeah, why? Why don't I already have this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why wasn't this 20 bucks? I don't know, like, every other game that goes down in price over, like, a, half a year. Yeah. But Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is a great game. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. It's super bright, super colorful. It's pretty much your straight standard 2d platform game this game feels just like it, i remember it feeling on the snes 20 years ago i hope not, not well okay <laughs> if okay it has that nostalgia factor where it matches in your mind what it was not oh, actually yeah. what it was like in my mind this is how this played on the super nintendo in reality it probably plays a dozen times better than that <laughs> yeah but i just still have that feeling like yeah, this is what Donkey Kong is. This is how Donkey Kong plays. This is exactly how that was. Yeah. That's like every HD re-release that comes out. You're like, oh, yeah, the game always looked like this. This would what, what they change. <laughs> like, they clearly changed a ton. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what this game has a feeling of, which is cool. And I like that because it does have that weird nostalgia factor of, no, it's, 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 it's a brand new Super Nintendo game. Like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. The one thing I forgot about, and I... <laughs> I don't even remember. Sometimes I forget things like this. Mm -hmm. Donkey Kong is hard as hell. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know why you're like super excited to get this because I, I mean, I've heard it's notoriously difficult, and I like difficult games. And you don't particularly like I, you like trials. You like instant restarts, but this did not look like an instant restart game. It is not an instant restart game. No, but like this game is hard, like <laughs> way harder than I had any conception <laughs> of it being. Is that good? Like you not it, liking hard no, games? No, it it works because it because of the learning curve and the difficulty builds. Mm -hmm. Like the first the first level or the first world, there's six worlds, main worlds. There's a whole bunch of secret crap in here. Mm -hmm. But the main worlds, the first one, you know, you just kind of play through and it's okay, yeah, the cool. This is Donkey Kong. I remember Donkey Kong's kind of fun, just kind of you know, it's a 2D platformer. This is great. Yeah. And then you get to the second one, you're like, okay. This is kind of hard. What's going on here? Yeah. Like I, I, this isn't like super meat boy or anything crazy like this is donkey kong let's take it easy here <laughs> and by the time i think i got to i don't know if it was the third or the fourth world boss but there's one boss where it's just like oh my gosh i have tried this like two dozen times what the hell donkey kong like <laughs> yeah yeah that i mean that always kind of scared me away from it too i mean it didn't scare me away but it's just like do I really need another like hard 2D platformer in my life? Like, so the thing I don't I don't quite get with this game because I've heard it's really good. It's like I know you and I we've complained a few times on this podcast and our previous podcast about how we're kind of tired of 2D games. So why is this one like? Is it just because it's just so damn good compared to other 2D games? Or I think it's a combination of it's just so damn good and that nostalgia factor. Mm -hmm. I think those two things contribute to it. I think, like I said, the difficulty builds in this. I mean, if you play Super Meat Boy, that first world, you can just gun through. Yeah. And then you get to the second world, and all of a sudden you're just like, well, guess I'm dying 100 times now before I can pay, you know, get to the stupid little whatever you're trying to get to in Super Meat Boy. Mm -hmm. This one builds really well. So, I mean, it's, it's not until the third or fourth world where it started getting to the point where it's like, okay, I'm starting to see that game over screen a lot. 
The first oh, two worlds, yeah. I kind of just, you know, you kind of blow through, no real issue. You can just kind of get your checkpoints and stuff like that and still make it through. Mm-hmm. But by the time you get to the third or fourth world, it really does. And the fifth world kicked my ass. I don't know what it was about that world, but <laughs> the fifth world just beat the living shit out of me. That actually is pretty cool. I, I, I like that. It's kind of weird, like, Nintendo made a super hard game because I don't think... Although, no, I, I would say that they... Nintendo's been doing something kind of weird because I know with... Uh, what's that? What's that super? What is that? What's the latest Super Mario Brothers game called? The one that's on Wii U, like the Star Wars oh, like one. Super Mario 3D World, I think. Okay, yeah, I know that one actually had a lot. Uh, had like this thing called the Champions Road, which is like super insanely difficult thing that you could unlock. I've noticed that like Nintendo's kind of doing that. I think that's just trying to sort of satiate the kind of the older audience, like they can make hard yeah. games still. And I think that's kind of that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, and again, it it builds really cool. And by the time you get to the sixth world, the last world. It's still difficult. For some reason, in my mind, I felt like that was a much easier world than the fifth one, but mm-hmm. it still it had that, like, oh, my God, this is insane type stuff where it's like, okay, I have to jump through the barrel, which shoots me over here. Then this, then the mountain starts falling down. I have to jump up the platforms that are falling, jump into this barrel, which shoots me back up, but the whole world's still falling, so I still have to move quick, and it, just, it gets into some kind of crazy stuff like that where you have to be very precise with things, which I liked. I mean, is it, is it, does it feel like you're memorizing, though? Because like, that's one thing I never liked about, like, Mega Man and stuff. I felt like I was, like, constantly having to memorize. Or does it, like, kind of give you enough time that, like, well, I probably could have caught that if I was paying attention? For the most part, it's, I, I, you can catch that. And most of it is self-paced, where it's like, okay, I can stop and I can look at this for a second. And I can go, okay, what am I going to do here? But there's a couple times where it was like, okay, I just have to remember right, left, right, left. There were one or two moments like that. And specifically, that got into, like, the sixth world because there were some, like, weird things and that actually happened with the one part of this game i didn't like which were the stupid um flying barrel missions where you're on like a barrel that turns into a missile and you have to like and basically all you do is you adjust you hit a to adjust if you go higher or lower yeah oh geez so oh like, that's like that dumb little flash games i used to play like in high school <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like flappy bird you just try and get the bird to go through the thing yeah it's yeah. exactly like that but that one got into a lot of memorization of like okay the giant apple is here the peach falls down here, the robot goes up, down, up, and then that got into some, like, remembering where you had to get your guy position. But that's, I think, as close as it came to, like, the memorization aspect. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of always one of the cool things with Donkey Kong, is I like some of these older 2D platforms. Rayman always did a good job of it, of mixing some other things in there other than just, okay, run across the level. Okay, run across the harder level. Yeah. Okay, run across the harder level. So this one had, uh, you had the the barrel jetpack missile thing you have like mm-hmm. the classic rail cart you have the rhino so you've got a couple of different mission structures that you go through and each world normally has one or two of those which kind of changes things up which is pretty nice i always i always like when games change stuff up i think there's sort of a complaint that like a lot of people have is like um when a game gets further along in sequels like oh well we have to put something to mix it up but i always like that stuff like turret sections or whatever else like it's just something like uh Ratchet and clank's a big one where the later Ratchet and Clank games, like the Clank gameplay is like radically different than the Ratchet gameplay, but I like that there's this sort of thing to break up doing the exact same thing over and over again. Even it's still platforming from what it seems like this case, but it's a, it's at least yeah. like something that d- plays a little bit different. Yeah, and I think the key is just doing that well, because I know there's some games where they do it, and it's just, this is ridiculously stupid, and I'm just wasting my time doing this. This isn't fun. Yeah. But I think if you make it something, like in these games, these are not the hardest of hard <clears throat> excuse me hardest of hard levels these are more just like kind of that fun little aside where it's like now yeah, you're going down this yeah. big roller coaster and all you have to do is just jump your cart every now and then to get over the bumps in the roller coaster dang that's so awesome. it's kind of stuff like yeah. that that's kind of cool damn that actually sounds pretty cool i've been kind of this game's like gotten like some crazy accolades like is it that good is it like just yeah oh my it's, God, this game's amazing it, it is amazing it is awesome it's one of the best 2d platformers i've played in a long time which i know is a fairly specific sub genre but <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's one of the better ones i've played in a long time i mean i put it right up there with rayman origins for being one of the better platformers i've played in the last five or six years mm-hmm. but every world ends with a boss kind of your traditional thing those are awesome the boss fights are weird enough that you can kind of figure them out again there's a little bit of trial and error when it comes to like how to hit some different things but they're mm-hmm. fairly difficult they're longer too so it does have that traditional hit it three times type you know breakdown of jump on its head three times but yeah. instead of that it's do this one three times then do something slightly different three times then do something slightly different three times oh geez which gets insane by the end of it like there's one <laughs> fight where there's um where you're fighting a polar bear and the first time he just like kind of like 
charges at you and you know you have to jump on his head when he charges past you and not get hit by his horns because the polar bear has horns yeah um (laughs) but then by the end it like shoots blocks of ice that like at you that you have to try and jump over and then it charges at you and jump on his head and then like before that it'll do like okay now it's going to i don't remember what the polar bear one did specifically but i mean now it's going to throw something at you and you have to jump over that and this time, like, there was one where there's, like, a hanging monkey thing, and you had to duck under the monkey. And then the monkey started throwing bombs at you after you did that three times. And then the monkey climbed down, and the three monkeys kind of ran at you, and you had to kill off the ones that weren't the real monkey that were, like, the ghost monkey. So they, they oh, have some pretty, pretty cool. involved boss fights that are really, really well done. I've heard this game is, like, also, because I, I think I, I've seen footage of the bosses. And I, I like, one thing that kind of struck me, just, like, was that how like just damn cool it looked like the animation is like freaking ridiculous like and just the stuff that i've seen i don't know if that kind of carries over throughout the game like is it is it i'm always like really big on not a game has to like has the game has like a really strong art style and that usually what get, gets me interested into it and this game just looks like an awesome animation is that like thing is that something that's like consistent or is that something you only see like in the boss fights no that's that's throughout the whole thing there's the environments are awesome you've got you know your traditional platformer environments your jungle your ice your desert your whatever else your underwater mm. you've got all those there there's a couple really cool ones i think there's only two or three of these that are like silhouette levels so that new mario game you were mentioning does this where it's all black and the only thing you see is donkey kong's red tie oh yeah, yeah. and you just have kind of the outline of donkey kong is this black blur the enemies are these black just everything's kind of that black tone to it except the bright red tie oh that's kind of neat yeah, which are really, really cool, really artistic levels. So the art in this is crazy. The character designs look great. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, it's it's overall it's just a crazy well made game. Damn, uh, <laughs> this is like <laughs> unrelated. There's so many games that I want for Wii U, and there's just no way in hell I'm ever gonna own a Wii U. But god dang, I I really I really hope just because I keep hearing how good all these Wii U games, I hope that the NX is just backwards compatible so people have like a chance to actually experience these things i don't think many more wii u's are gonna be sold in the future but there's a ton of good games that came out for this i keep hearing this one said in the same breath as like mario galaxy and stuff it's like oh those yeah for sure awesome games that nobody played well i guess a lot of people play mario galaxy but yeah um, but very yeah very similar style to a very similar where it's just that perfectly very well made game and that's that's what this is there's if you played Donkey Kong on the Super Nintendo, if you've played it through the years, there's not a whole lot different about this. Mm-hmm. But it's made so well, and it's the art style is so good. The it's the controls are super tight. Mm-hmm. The level design has some cool different ideas behind it, where things the way things interact with you and the way you interact with the environments, just everything about it is really really well done. Are you gonna go back and try to get 100 percent or? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> these games i always like 100 percent because there's like it's like clear the exact amount of collectibles you need to get um yeah yep so i like those no. i'm pretty sure i don't i think i maybe got all the kong letters in like two levels and that's it i don't know, <laughs> oh. so I, just, I, don't know I don't i don't have any desire to try for that stuff i'm kind of there are a ton of secret worlds and as you go through the world map it's you know it takes you out and you just go dot to dot basically on this world map yeah uh you know in that traditional nintendo sense but there are so many like little secret worlds especially when you get into the last two where it's like there's probably a dozen dots on that map that i've never seen before oh geez that's kind of cool so yeah um which i feel bad about but i also don't want to put in the work to get those so (laughs) yeah Yeah, i mean like that'd be something i go on online and i get a guide and like usually what i do if i get to that point for certain games like how hard is it to unlock those things and then i judge it based on whatever my research oh, yeah, for tells sure. me for sure but again like this game like it's so hard as it is that by the time i was done with it i love this game by the time i was done with it, i was like thank god that game's done that was so good <laughs> but oh my god that was that pissing me off <laughs> And I think I think you posted this to our Twitter. I texted Doug, and I think I, I, I actually said, brought the, I actually brought that up. <laughs> yeah, well, what was it? It was something like Donkey uh, Kong is dumb as shit, or something like. That. <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! I now I closed it. Um. Yeah, it was something to the extent of no, I hate this game. It's too hard. Never mind. It's good again. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's exactly how this game made me feel. Is I love 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 this game, and then I just get pissed as hell and be like, this game's dumb as shit. Like, there's no reason this stupid fish boss. There's a puffer fish that you have to fight as a boss, and like his final like boss form is he fills up three quarters of the screen as a puffer fish. Yeah, 
and it's the damn swimming level, so it's hard to hard a little bit harder to control. And that stupid thing. I think that was when I messaged you that I was like, "This game sucks. I hate it." <laughs> and then I beat it. And I was like, "Okay, this game's back to being fun again. I like this game." But that's that's exactly these emotions this game puts you through. It's awesome. There is, I mean, no story to this. It's a Donkey Kong game. You're on your island, and ice pirates show up, and they make things icy, and then you kick them off your island, and that's the extent of the plot. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're looking for a story, probably <laughs> not your thing. Yeah, I mean, besides, I mean, besides like <laughs> Nintendo games having no story, like Donkey Kong, especially, it's like somebody, it's like some creature invades Donkey Kong's lands and kidnaps, or is just there or it's just like it's this just... one's just there no kidnapping you do get <laughs> to play as uh you play strictly as donkey kong but you do get uh cranky diddy and dixie kong to all help you and basically all they do is just alter your jump style which makes for some kind of cool platforming so mm-hmm. um diddy kong has his jet pack so you can kind of float to a platform that's further away um dixie has her hair that spins around so you get like a little extra almost like a double jump mm-hmm. and then cranky has a pogo stick so you jump and then bounce but all these kind of change the way that you interact with different things. And especially when it gets to boss fights, it changes kind of your mentality of how you do it. Mm-hmm. I was talking about the polar bear one before, which ends up being really easy if you can keep uh, Diddy Kong with you the whole time because you can kind of float for a second when it charges past you and then land on its body so you don't get hit by its horns. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it does change it up a little bit there from the traditional, just you're running through as Donkey Kong. Mm-hmm. So final final one sentence. If you can describe this whole game and your experience with it, everything as sort of our X out of ten. We don't really do those review scores, but what's like your one sentence review score essentially? Donkey Kong is amazing. You should play it. It's frustrating, but it's amazing. You should play it. I'll just assume those are commas or semicolons. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Kong is amazing. You should play it. I'm a big fan of run on sentences. Okay, well, I, I mean, I've, I'm nowhere near an English major, so... <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my sixth and seventh grade teacher wasn't a fan, but I am, so... <laughs> We're gonna go run on sentence, that yeah, there you go. So Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, yes, you should play it. If you have a Wii U and you don't have this game, it's $20 now, go buy it. So that was our Brad's review of, <laughs> of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. <laughs> uh if you like what you heard, you can always follow us on Twitter at Workforce Gaming. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're on, if you're listening to us on iTunes, you can always subscribe to us there as well. Although I don't even know if, if you can listen to us on iTunes without having already subscribed to us, which is kind of redundant. You uh, you you can listen to iTunes without subscribing on it. If you type in Workforce Gaming and hit <laughs> search, we pop up. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll we'll see you guys in the in the coming weeks. Well, anyway, we'll we'll see you guys in the in the coming weeks. Bye. <laughs>